why do people attack the West and why within the West is there, does there seem to be a sort of uh, imp of the perverse that wants to destroy everything that gave us what we have. There are such things as British values, there are such things as uh, Western values. We've got to be confident in what they are and that is the only way that we will continue to thrive as a society and as a civilization. The West is under attack. We live in the freest, healthiest and wealthiest societies in human history. Yet as authoritarian and oppressive regimes threaten us from without, a new movement within tells us to feel nothing but shame for who we are. Welcome to the West. This is my take on the great and still unfolding adventure of who we are and why it matters. This is a history of how our extraordinary unconventional civilization came to be and why it must be defended. It's a fascinating and often unexpected journey, stretching back 15 centuries to the fall of Rome. And it starts with a mystery, the loss of Western self-confidence. What on earth happened to the West? Hi there, I'm Peter Whittle. Uh, you've just seen the trailer for our great new documentary series, The West. You might have seen the very first episode which aired uh, on Sunday. Uh, and I'm very pleased that today I'm joined by the writer and presenter of that series, Mark Sidwell. Uh, Mark Sidwell is a senior fellow for us here at the NCF. Um, and you will know he's the author of The Long March book. Um, Mark, this is quite a landmark for us to do this series. Um, I thought it looked absolutely beautiful. Uh, congratulations. Um, how long did it take all of it? The whole thing, well, and thank you very much, Peter. And, and of course, I, sh I should first of all thank you for having the, the vision to, to take something on this sort of scale forward, or, or perhaps the madness to think it might be possible. Because of course, this is the sort of thing that in the day, like, you would have to have vast resources, a real TV channel on, on, on mainstream broadcast to put together. But what we managed to do with a relatively limited team is amazing. And I think it was what, a, a year and a half from conception to being yes. able to show this episode. And perhaps really a year total of, from original production work, if you include me starting to do the, the research, perhaps six months of, of, uh, of filming. And really it's much, it's on a different scale to some of the things we've done before, not just because there are six episodes and we're, we're sort of keeping that as a coherent series. So, you know, it's much more demanding to link that together. And there's so many more interviews, just the interviews. We had 14, I think, which is just an enormous amount of material. But we also got to travel all over the place to do it. We've been to, <laughs> we've been to Rome, we've been to Florence, we've been to Washington DC and all around the UK as well. And that's just been thrilling to see all of those places and bring so much visually to the series and so much so much character and story yes i think it, what's interesting is that it's i think it would be right to say that it's the first of its kind actually that i can think of produced by an organization like us mm, yeah. um <clears throat> most documentaries done for youtube are uh, kind of quite quick grab things with a few like the daily wire mm, does yeah. documentaries and things. with this this is very much your vision of the West. So did you have that did you have that in your head before even starting or did it emerge? I think I had something in my head. I've always been fascinated by this subject, which I think was why we ended up talking about it. You know, we've known each other a, a long time and, and I, I suppose I got really interested in the subject of the West and Western civilization after 9-11 when it became, mm. you know, an issue that seemed more pressing than ever. And then in recent years it's right back at the forefront of the news. You know, you've got um, 
people coming out on one hand from the, from the left, from the radical left, saying things in very mainstream forums, saying, well, Western civilization does not exist. The West is a morally bankrupt fiction. These are, this has effectively become the mainstream view. And then a few brave people pushing back, including uh, Ron DeSantis in, in, in America, who you know, may well be running for president, uh, um, saying that he wants to see Western civilization back on the college on the college syllabus. You said that, really? Yeah, recently. Yeah. So this mm. is this is you know highly topical. But then, what I wanted to do was put together a, a way of talking about the West that respected that traditional narrative, but maybe also learned from what the more recent um, attacks on it have been, some of the critiques, the newer history. So it's slightly unfamiliar in some ways. I hope it 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 is an up to date view of the West that recognizes some of the, the complexities and the nuance that have you know, entered mm. the historical conversation. Yeah, it, is, uh, it, it covers pretty much every aspect. I mean, there are six parts. So mm. this, the second one is coming up on uh, this coming Sunday. So what can we expect in that? I am very excited by the second episode. It may be almost my favorite, although of course I, I love different things in all of them. The second one is all about the importance of Christianity in the West. And this has become, you know, quite a, uh, an important cutting edge area in recent years. Tom Holland, perhaps most famously, has made the idea very mainstream that we have underestimated the importance of Christianity in the evolution of the West and in, of the sort of liberal democratic systems that we have in very deep ways. But he's, there's been something that people have been saying for a long time. And of course, the counter narrative has been going on um, most famously when the EU refused to acknowledge its Christian roots. In, in its constitutional treaty when there was much more argument about it about uh, 10 years or so ago. But, but really, people are coming around to the idea that we, we can't ignore the, this Christian heritage, which is not about a question of belief, but it's simply understanding where things come from and having more respect for the sort of medieval roots of many things that we think of as more modern. So that's really exciting. And some of the, the footage is just beautiful. We've got some shots from Canterbury. and um, Well, in fact, in that case, this Let's send time on the fashion. Let's <laughs> take a look at a clip from next week's The West. It was a culture that celebrated beauty as a vision of God's perfection, and it produced buildings like this. And not just buildings, but some of the greatest art and music the world has ever known. One of the least quoted lines in the Gospels is Jesus saying, I say these things to you because I want you to have the joy, I want the joy that's in me to be in you. And, you know, you look at a lot of Christians and you think, I'm not seeing the joy there. <laughs> I think that the joy uh, is actually the, the, the northern star of spirituality. I think that that's what you're moving toward, you're moving toward joy. And that joy is a sense that life is just so incredibly worth it that with all its terror, with all its uh, uh, misery, with all its grief, with all its atrocity, there is something about life that is just inherently good. And that's only beauty produces that feeling in you. It looks wonderful, as you say, Mark. Uh, and that's all credit as well to our cameraman, uh, Ollie Hewis. Absolutely. Um, there are a lot of people you've interviewed for this. Who, who have you interviewed? Give us some... oh, gosh, so many people. Um, I was I was thrilled that in the in the U.S. we were able to interview Andrew Claven at the Daily Wire, who was just you know wonderful. I'm mean, such a thoughtful man, and really mm. just full full of ideas and had a passion for the West. And again, in, in episode two, there's some, some wonderful stuff that he's saying about Michelangelo, which is just a, is a real thrill. But some some great experts from the U.S. too, like Stanley Kurtz, who really understands the evolution of of the West and its importance to America, and some of the, the sort of woke pushback against that. George Weigel. Who knows a great deal about uh, you know, the Catholic tradition and its relationship to the West and the, the deeper history. But here too we've had uh, Nigel Bigar. I spoke to him just before his book on colonialism came out, so uh, that's been terrific for the, the later episode where we look at colonialism, slavery, the age of discovery and try and get a more accurate perspective on it and, and what really made the West rich. We have uh, Konstantin Kissin from Trigonometry uh, and of course, Emma Webb from the NCF's own mm, Emma Webb, mm, who is mm. terrific as well. Uh, so, so many, so many different voices, and I've, you know, you learn so much in the process. That's been terrific. Yeah, did you ask you to the subject change while you were doing it in any way? I think I've actually become much more optimistic, which is perhaps a bit right, unusual. Okay. Well, particularly conservatives, when they talk about the West, you know, have a tendency to despondency. But I think the more you study it and you see its capacity for renewal or 
the, the challenges and the difficulties mm. it's been through. Uh, I do really believe that it has within itself always this capacity to find its way back. Uh, one of the things which I think of as a, a sort of great statement of, of the West's capacity for renewal, funnily enough, is, is The Lord of the Rings by, by Tolkien, which uh, of course is, draws deeply on his academic and historical knowledge of, of the origins of the West, even though it, it, it's fictional. And in that you find, in the original books and I think in the, in the Peter Jackson films, which are always worth watching, uh, a focus on this idea of, of mm, kingdoms that have become corrupt or have lost their way, have forgotten who they are, mm. but that the deep roots are not touched by frost and that you know, the West and, it, and its power comes back again. You know, and uh, that, that great moment in the films where they're at the, the gates of, of Mordor, of the evil kingdom, and they're like, you know, there may be days when mm. we fall, but it won't be this day. And, and, and that is, is very, very powerful and I think still true today. I remember when um, we were filming, because I came out with you a couple of times, um, and the, there was an ac a great emphasis put on spectacles at one point, because we were filming outside a, a spectacle shop on Oxford Street, I think it was. Yes. Um, but where does that feature in this long narrative? And why did you choose that, for example? I found it fascinating. I didn't know why. Well, people don't know very much about it, I think, and this goes back to the idea that perhaps w when we've played down Christianity, with that has gone a sense that the Middle Ages are almost unimportant, they're kind of Dark Ages themselves, and really there was this leap from Greece and Rome to uh, the Renaissance and then to the Enlightenment, but really so much happened I in the Middle Ages, and some of it was crucial inventions, not just the printing press, which is far more famous, but things like the mechanical clock and like spectacles, which were actually in some ways almost as important as the printing press, because the printing press was only possible because suddenly you had this amazing invention that allowed people in early middle age and later to be able to read relatively easily, which with, without spectacles is a real problem. Unfortunately, I've, I've recently discovered uh, <laughs> there's not much you can do about that. Age catches up with your eyes, but you need people who to, to provide a large audience for, for book publishing on a mass scale to work. You need a, a large audience that can actually read, uh, and preferably when they're older. So it was a really powerful invention, and it, it was very distinctively Western. It's not something that happened elsewhere. Yes. I think, you know, when you, you alluded to this earlier, you couldn't imagine something like this on the BBC. Um, it's not a hagiography, is it? I mean, it's certainly not just uh, it's not sort of crack a barrel and 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 rah rah at all it's quite nuanced i think but it couldn't really be done by any of our mainstream broadcasters now with any kind of conviction could it i think not i mean it, <coughs> it hasn't necessarily well maybe this is i'm ju just showing my age they could do it in the late 1980s they made the triumph of the west by john roberts which is people remember less than they do civilization by kenneth clark even though it was more recent but it's still it's on youtube it's it's worth a look, but since then uh, it has become impossible, and I guess that's actually much longer ago than I like to think. That's probably 30 years ago or something. So yeah, I think yeah. about 1989. Yeah, uh, and, and it was um, yes. I suppose that was because that period I in your program there is some footage of Reagan and Thatcher of around that era. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when that's when things seem to be very much in the ascendant again. Yeah, I think I think Cold War helped in a way. It focused the mind. Mm. But Thatcher also used to talk about this, uh, and it's in the episode one as well. She talked in the late 90s about how the West was something that we had to hold on to after the end of the Cold War, that it wasn't just a Cold War thing, that we needed these values and a confidence in them in the future. And I think what was going back to the BBC or TV revisiting these things and the fact that it can't, you saw it very recently, just a few years ago, when the BBC looked back at civilization and tried to do a, a remake or an update, and they couldn't come up with something so confident. It was called Civilizations, yeah. and there were four different presenters, and it just, it, it was pleasant enough in its way, but it was, it was muddied, and it didn't really have anything to say, and it didn't make anything like the impact. And when it talked about the West, to the extent that it did, it was generally as a, as a colonizer and as a sort of evil influence. Mm. Actually, that's a good point, because uh, they did that program, it's entirely forgotten, I mm. say, that, that, that civilizations program. But I think there's a, a line in Kenneth Clark's civilization where he says, it's hard to define civilization, but I know it when I see it. 
And so many of the images, beautiful images in the West, your program, um, make you feel like that. I mean, you know, I, I was watching it thinking, good Lord. And in fact, one of the guests, we had a screening, and uh, I think it was Catherine Burgle saying so, uh, that you could actually just take out the words and just put the music, have <laughs> the music and these images. And that would almost be enough to actually show you why the West is so important. Absolutely. I think that's one of the reasons pe people still love Kenneth Clark's civilization as well. You, pe one of the reasons I wanted to do this was because you can suddenly use new technology to, to do these things. And Kenneth Clark was, we don't think of him as an innovator, you know, but it was a, a technical innovation. Color TV was very new. Yeah. This was the first chance for people to see the treasures of Western civilization in their living rooms, and that's an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And again, now, even though there's photos everywhere, and you know, in theory there's access, but it's not put in front of people, so they perhaps forget about it. They don't hear the beautiful music. They don't look at the cathedrals and mm. see it as one thing. So suddenly now, with the new technology, which of course is YouTube, mm. I think we get the chance to do that again. And mm. as you say, just to see them is to be refreshed mm. and inspired and reminded of what beauty can do. I mean, I, obviously, it would be great if young people watch this. And I said, YouTube has got a kind of a demographic which tends to skew male, doesn't mm -hmm. it? But also, I think a bit old, I think. I think I'm not sure, but... Different corners of it, <coughs> perhaps, but yeah. we'll, we'll have to see. I was talking yeah. to the, the deprogrammed team, of course, yes. uh, another, another New Culture Forum team, and um, you know that, that's a younger audience there, so hopefully that reaches out a little bit. But yeah, I do hope. I've tried to make it accessible and something that you know, anyone who's curious can find their way to. Yeah. And, and hopefully, yes, something that men and women alike can also yeah. enjoy. I mean, episode two, again, uh, looks as it perhaps um, unusually looks at the importance of women in, in the history of, of Christianity, particularly in the West. And I think that's underappreciated. There's lots of, uh, of important kings very early on who basically their queens understood Christianity before they did and led them to be converted. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have what really? we have uh, if it wasn't for, uh, for uh, women like that. You, you mentioned the, 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 uh, a minute ago about being optimistic about the West, and um, I am uh, too. Uh, it can be hard to be, and in fact, interestingly, last week, as you know, we were taken up with uh, getting ready for the launch of this. Um, I saw something with Neil Oliver, who's been a guest on this mm. channel, and he was sort of talking about the. Well, it's not exactly an original. Uh, observation but about the kind of degeneracy that you see and he used that word uh, decadence now in the West very similar to the Roman Empire. you know the usual yeah. art. do you think there's I mean would you go along with that and if you would are we talking about a generational recovery what what, what is your feeling about that? I think in a way the strength of the West is that it has this uh, decentralized quality in the, in the end, in the hearts of, of every Western person, there's, there's a very individualistic sense of themselves and of what matters. And what's reflected in our larger institutions and, and, and forms like dem democracy and freedom of speech and all of that, however you know, constrained they may be these days, is an idea that individuals think for themselves and stand for themselves. And it's not all done by like one emperor, one yeah. god king at the center. And that means that even when many people go the wrong way or have confused ideas there's actually a lot of energy from somewhere else that can come in and change things and people have new ideas and things can swing back the other way when people start to notice that hey this is getting a little crazy people's voices can be heard mm -hmm. so so i'm hopeful in that sense and i think you know yes things are decadent and that <laughs> perhaps that's one sign of, of what happens when people can do whatever they like but when people can do whatever they like there will always be room for people to come through and stand up for other things too absolutely absolutely well let's hope this is a sort of a bit of a kind of a, a benchmark for that I mean let's hope this kind of starts something some, some revive I hope so um, now so uh, going over the next five weeks so it's 9 30 on Sunday mm -hmm. in the morning in the morning 9 30 a.m. Sunday morning, The West. Uh, episode two is coming up this Sunday. Um, all the best. Well done, Alfred, with it. Um, you know, I really hope it, it deserves to be a huge success. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very pleased. Thanks very much for coming along and joining us. Um, 
And uh, well, you heard the West this coming Sunday, 9.30 a.m. Um, and uh, that would be episode two. Um, watch the whole series when she was six. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, we shall see you next week. Thank you. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you. Thank you.